the long-awaited Mac OS Big Sur is here. And with it, there's a fairly significant design change. There's lots of iOS, suspiciously iOS-like features. But the big question you've probably got is, should I upgrade? Well, I've upgraded both my production machines, both my iMac and my 16-inch MacBook Pro. I use both of them daily for work. And yeah, I've gone ahead and put Big Sur on them. Here's my findings. Welcome back to Marketless Reviews. Thank you for subscribing if you already have. If you haven't, click below, you'll never miss an episode. So, Mac OS Big Sur. Now, I've just decided to do this video off the cuff, really, but I did upgrade both my production machines this week. Um, I'm one of those people who does it straight away as soon as it's released. Um, if you're like that as well, or if you're perhaps normally like that, but you're a little bit reticent about doing it at the moment, I, I totally understand. But I've been running it for two days now, and I've been running it on both my MacBook and my iMac. I rely on both of these machines day in, day out for work. They have to work. So if you're wondering whether it's time to upgrade or wait, this is the video to watch. So the upgrade, um, the actual process itself was pretty straightforward. Uh, I think because I chose to at least try and upgrade the iMac on the day of release, like many people, there were all sorts of problems with Apple's servers and it just didn't work. So I had to wait until the next morning. You need about 12 gig of hard drive space, but apart from that, you can just click download and away you go. I didn't experience any issues with it. I never have experienced an issue, touch wood, upgrading macOS. It's always been pretty faultless, really. Um, and this was the case with, with Big Sur. The first thing you notice when you upgrade to macOS Big Sur is that they've brought back the chime, which is just amazing. It's the best thing ever. In fact, I'm gonna demonstrate it now, which does mean restarting my MacBook, but it's it's worth it, I promise, because if you, like me, you missed that chime. It's back. I like that. I think it's a, another instance of where Apple has kind of very clearly put their marker in the ground and said firmly, we do still support the Mac. They've obviously always supported it, but there's been, for a long time, there's been a lot of question marks over how much they value the Mac over things like the iPhone. That's nice, I like that. The design is probably the biggest thing that's changed. So let's quickly dive in and have a look. Before I do anything actually, the I love these new wallpapers. They've got these what are called dynamic wallpapers which change throughout the day. So as the day changes outside, you know, as the, it gets lighter or darker or whatever, wallpaper changes in line with that. So if we look at what they give you, now they've got these lovely kind of, I'm not sure what you call these, I'm not a designer, but they're certainly like um, pastel-y kind of realizations of, of what I guess would have been photos originally. They've got the, standard Big Sur, Mac OS, California type stuff in there as well. And these all change. So as the day goes on, they get darker and lighter, which is nice. Um, but they've included a whole range of other images and they always pay a lot of attention to the desktop wallpapers they give you. I wish they did it with the iPhone and with iOS, because they don't. I think that the wallpapers on iOS are so dreary and boring, whereas the stuff they give you for Mac OS, I very rarely put my own wallpapers on, simply because they're so stunning, they're so great. I mean, some of the new ones we have here, I think these are all new to Mac OS, Big Sur. Lovely, really nice. Now the design refresh is quite significant, but it's, it's also long overdue, I think. And you can see the corners are rounded, they have put new shading in place and all sorts of things. But the biggest difference, I think, and something which fascinates me, is the fact that the design appears to be more touch friendly. And by that, I mean the, the actual buttons, the controls are all a little bit bigger. And I've found myself several times, not with the iMac, but certainly with the MacBook, actually reaching out to touch it. I feel this urge to touch the screen and I've felt it more so with big, o, with, with, um, with big OS, with Mac OS Big Sur. There's no inclination that they're gonna go down the route of having a, a touchscreen Mac. There's lots of speculation about it. They've never said anything about it. And, and I think long, a long time ago, they, they always said that iOS and Mac OS will continue on this, these different paths, albeit connected, but completely different paths. I'm not convinced about that. I think we're gonna see a touchscreen Mac at some stage. And part of the reason for that, if you look at, for example, the control center, these controls here for display and sound, they're perfectly designed for, for your finger. To me, I think this is heading one way, uh, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. But yeah, the design refresh, I mean, if we look at the Apple apps, I think the best way of describing the design refresh is exactly that, it's just a refresh. Don't expect big things from it, it just looks 
more modern. That's probably the best way of putting it. However, as some people have pointed out, they've made a few missteps, shall we say? I think notably the, the biggest issues they have are with some of the icons. Now, some of the icons look great. So if we look at, for example, Safari, arguably things like Finder, the App Store, I quite like those redesigns. What doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me and others is what they've done with icons like the messages. They just look a bit old fashioned, if I'm honest. The worst example I've found of it, if you go into settings, is the notifications bell. What is that all about? It just looks hideous. I love the control center. So if we head up to the top right, um, as I mentioned before, it all looks very touch friendly, um, but you can customize it. It's a little bit hidden. Um, I'll quickly show you where that is. So if you go into settings or system preferences uh, and into dock and menu bar, in here we can change what appears in control center and you are limited to what Apple give you access to. I guess that might change in future. Maybe we'll get third party apps and things being able to appear in there. But generally speaking, you can turn things on and off. But one of the coolest things is that you can actually drag and drop controls from here. So for example, if you want screen mirroring in your menu bar, you just drag it across. Bang, there it is. Performance, it's great. I mean, I'm running Mac OS Big Sur on two pretty powerful computers. That said, the iMac is what, three years old nearly now. Um, but no, it just feels great. I, I think the, the benefit of of Macs these days, and certainly with the M1, the Apple Silicon on the way, is that they have much more control over what goes into these machines and the way it relates and and marries up with the with the operating system. So, performance. I wouldn't expect any big gains in performance um, unless you're perhaps going from a very old Mac. Um, double check compatibility with, with with Big Sur obviously, but unless you've got a very old version of macOS, it's time to be a bit sluggish. You might find they've built in some efficiencies with, with Big Sur, can't guarantee that. But yeah, performance wise, it's, it's quick as you'd expect. Now app compatibility, the one thing I was a little bit scared of um, was would everything still work? One of the main apps I use obviously is Final Cut Pro and that just works, no problems at all. Logic Pro, works, no problems at all. Um, I've not fully dug into Logic Pro yet. I might do a separate video on that in terms of third party plugins, etc. but a very quick test. I use quite a few third party um, plugins in Logic Pro. Seems fine to be honest, but I'll, I'll do some more digging on that for you. Things like Slack work okay. Um, Trello works. Uh, I use Microsoft Teams every single day. That works fine. All the Microsoft Office apps work, Word, Excel, etc. I also use OmniFocus. That's fine. I use uh, toggle to track my time, that all works. I use an email client called Spark, that works as well. And Photoshop works. And that's it, basically. Should you upgrade to Big Sur? Put it this way, if you just use Apple apps, so if you're pretty much completely in their, their ecosystem, it will be fine. Just upgrade now, don't think about it. However, if you use things like Logic, and you have lots of third-party plugins, or you perhaps use other third-party software day in, day out, whether it's for business or personal reasons, double-check compatibility with the software vendor, with the developer. Make sure they fully support Big Sur. I think most of them probably will. These days, developers are fantastic in the way that they get their software up and running for the, for the new OS. So I won't worry too much, but just double-check to be sure. If you rely on your Macs for business, I really would think twice about upgrading. I've done it because I feel it my duty to do so for this channel, uh, and also because I'm just a bit of a geek and I like new things. For example, when I tried to install macOS Big Sur on the MacBook on the night of release, and it failed to download and, and, and what have you, um, although the laptop was still working, it started doing some odd things. So for example, um, Final Cut Pro wasn't opening quickly and it was very slow when it was open. It, it righted itself, thankfully, but I, that was the evening I was editing my last video. And yet, yeah, that was me doing it on the night of release, which is a bit stupid anyway. But um, I think even now, even now we're in, you know, we're kind of, by the time you watch this, perhaps even a week into the release, I'd still wait a bit if you rely on your Macs for, for work. The other thing is, if you've got a setup that works perfectly, don't upgrade yet. Wait. I'm, I'm normally of the mind that you should upgrade based on security because the latest operating systems have new security features built in to protect you from malware and all the nasty people out there. Um, that said, Apple are great at keeping their operating systems up to date. I know right up to the day of release for OET for Big Sur, they were still updating the previous version. So if you've got a system that works, don't change it. And that's it. Very quick dive into macOS Big Sur. I am going to do lots more testing with this. I will probably do some separate videos on separate apps. So if, if for example, you're interested in how it works with Logic and third-party 
uh, plugins, subscribe because I will do something around that. But in the meantime, carry on watching for a link to a video I recently did about this, the 16 inch MacBook Pro and five things I've learned about it, which will sway your purchasing decision one way or the other, I reckon. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. See you then.